Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Doing doing good. Do some podcast ASMR here. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we are. Did you hear it this time, Kyle? Just a tiny bit. Okay. Well, uh, last time you couldn't hear it at all and it came through just fine on the podcast. So I think as long as it makes it to the recording, we're good. Uh, we have a hazy headlines from oh the I got the light right on that from Masthead Cleveland Brewery tonight. Uh, that's the beer. Kyle, what are we what are we doing tonight for the actual podcast? Uh, we're gonna do our depth chart prediction 1.0. Uh, now that now that early signing day is done and the transfer portal for Ohio State is done, uh, unless there's any any other big surprises that comes in, I I think we know who's going to be coming, who's going to be on the field or suited up for the 2024 season. Yeah, um, I think it'll be interesting. I think we're, I think we're, I think we know what the roster is. I, I think at least until after spring, because there's another portal opening after spring. Um, That's true. In, in, until after spring, I think we know what the roster is at this point. I, I, I don't ex- even if we were to get another recruit before national signing day, which I'm not anticipating uh, will happen. Um, they're not going to come in for the spring. I, I do not anticipate. There, there are some rumors out there that maybe Ohio State might pursue a Michigan player or two since Michigan players with Harbaugh officially leaving for the NFL that maybe uh, there'll be some Michigan play. I, I don't see it. I have not seen anything to this point that I would call definitive uh, to, to strongly suggest that that's possible. So I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think this is the roster for Ohio State until after spring. I think this is the roster. All right. Yeah, it's. I, th- I think I think um, the. Especially the defensive side, Jared, could have been a lot different. Could have been a lot different. <laughs> Could have been a lot different here, but man, this just looking at the roster here and getting over to the depth chart uh, here shortly. But just looking at the roster, I think you mentioned it once before, maybe a couple of episodes ago. Maybe the most talented defense that we've seen at Ohio State in a very, 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 very long time. I mean, we're talking specifically about. Um secondaries a week or two ago. Um, But just defensively overall, pure talent, uh, you'd be hard pressed to find a better Ohio state team ever. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation at at the very least. Definitely. All right. But we're kind of beating, beating around the bush here, Jared. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and start with the offense offensive side here. Sure, let's do that. Uh, let's do let's let's do your favorite. Let's do your favorite. Let's do the slobs. Let's start with uh, the slobs up front. Are, are we start are we starting starting out of order? Okay. Yes, hold we on. are. Let me let me recalibrate that, real quick. Okay. Sorry. I, I, how I do things. Yeah, I know, but I had everything in order in in Photoshop for the visual. And you throwing a wrench into that just made I, it is fine. I've adjusted. I just had to adjust. That's all. All right. Uh, if you're just if you're just watching the or if you're just listening to the podcast version of this, we're gonna throw the names up on the screen as we go for the YouTube folk. All right. I think unanimously here, Jared, your your starting center is McLaughlin. McLaughlin, um, I think so. Uh, you have Padilla, who was the starting center last year. Or excuse me, no. Um, <laughs> um, 
when it comes to the center position, Hinsman was the center last year. Um, I think they bring in McLaughlin specifically to replace him. I think that's that's why McLaughlin is is brought in. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a lot of talk early on about, hey, is he a guard? Is he a center at Ohio State? And I think he's a center. He's going to be the center at Ohio State. Um, I'm not sure where the relationship stands between Ohio State and Hinsman and Hinsman and Ohio State. Um, so for now, I think the odds on favorite is McLaughlin at, at center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's what I have for my for my prediction as well. But I think and we who, have. And who do you I have backing have little, him up? I have Hinsman. I have Hinsman as the backing him up. And I have Padilla, which I. I again, I don't know where the relationship is at right now, between Hinsman and Ohio State, and Ohio State and Hinsman. Um, I think there's a distinct possibility he might transfer uh, after the spring. Um, I'm not, you know, we it, it's in today kind of longstanding. Like we don't talk about transfers on the podcast. I, Kyle, I don't know if that's a realistic stance to take anymore in the age of the portal and poor two, poor, two portal windows. If we can realistically, ha- if we can have a realistic conversation about a college football roster without talking about, transfers and potential transfers. I just don't yeah. think that's, it's a long standing thing we never did on the show, but I just don't think that's a realistic stance to take anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have, I have, I have hints of just not even thinking about transfer transfers and all that. So if this I'm, is the roster I'm thinking here, about, I, got I am thinking about transfers in my projection. Um, so I have Padilla now, Kyle, we do. We're, we've decided we're coming to a consensus on the show. Um, I have Padilla written in currently. If you want to take a stance on this one and say no, Hinsman's on the roster. We're going to keep him on the roster till he's on the roster. Yeah, I'll respect it. That's 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 exactly it. If he's still on the if he's still on the roster, he he is he is right there. He he sh- he should be on there. So I got I got Hinsman. I'm going to let you have that this time. I don't know if I'm going to let you take that stance all the way through the podcast. But for now, I'll, I'll, I'll let you have Hensman in, in the depth chart. What position are you going to next? All right. Uh, let us go. Left tackle? I guess let's do – let's do – sure. Um, yeah, left tackle. Who do you got? I have Luke Montgomery there. I, I believe that Simmons Ooh. is a right tackle. That's what he played at San Diego State. Um, I don't know that he has. I don't know if he's an Ohio State quality left tackle. Now, in his second year in the program, maybe he takes a jump and maybe he's way better this year than he was last year. And quite frankly, he was much better at the end of the season than he was at the beginning of the season. So we really might see Simmons continue to take uh, strides forward and be better. And maybe by the time September rolls around, maybe he is an Ohio State quality left tackle. Um, but I, for right now, I'm going to project that Simmons gets moved to right tackle where, you know, he, that's where he played in San Diego state. He never played left tackle before they, they brought Simmons to Ohio state to be the right tackle. That's why they brought him here. Um, I think that's where he is more naturally fit. I, I'm going to project that they move Simmons to right tackle and that Montgomery wins the left tackle spot. That is I mean, my I got projection. Simmons here. I mean, I got Simmons as your starting left tackle right now. Uh, it's hard for it's hard for me to put Montgomery out there. I'm telling right, you right, right now, now, Kyle. Right, it right is now, my I mean, I mean, it is my preference that that goes to a high profile left tackle that hits the portal after the spring and not Montgomery. Yeah, that, and I have, but we can't project that. Yeah, so I I have Simmons as my left tackle, and then the right tackle, 
Um, right tackle, I have Fryer. If if we have the same tackle pair that we did last year, we're in trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to put my foot on this one, Kyle. Uh, I'm going to put my foot down. I, I want I want the tackle combo the way I have it. And that you're I and it is my desire again that the left tackle actually be a, like a high profile transfer who hits the portal after the spring. That would be my desire. Um, But I, I don't think Fryer and Fryer is entering his sixth year, I believe. Mm-hmm. I, he's not going to he's not going to all of a sudden turn into an Ohio State quality tackle this offseason like it's it's I, I i i if he was gonna do that he would have done it by now um i i, I mean, would be i, mean, if simmons, I would be i mean so if simmons has a great spring has a great spring and just really showcases how how much he's improved then yeah maybe, maybe i can yeah i can put i think i can put montgomery out there but until i until i see that like i I, we I can compromise. That, I know Kyle. you mentioned that having if Simmons and Fryer is out there still, that we're in trouble. But I, we we don't really truly know we, how well Montgomery is. How we we know how he can be, but we just don't. Know I I do how know well he is. I I do know how good Fryer is. If you read between the lines on that, um, Kyle, we can compromise here and keep Simmons at left tackle and put Montgomery at right tackle. Would that be an acceptable compromise for you? Sure. Sure. Well, that's going to make my uh, backup left tackle a little odd then because at my backup left tackle, I had Simmons or Mikowski. <laughs> and I had my backup I had my backup right tackle is Montgomery. So I guess you can have ugh. All right. Well, so so my my backup left tackle is uh Mikowski. Yeah. I'll just edit this real quick to just be Mikowski. Then I um, guess your backup I guess your backup right tackle who do, who do we got? Who do we got out there? Um, you got Fryer. Um, let me let me look. Who else I got here. I would make the argument that Tegra Chibola. Oh. Who do you have at starting left tackle? It's on this. It's on the screen. Can you read it? Um, I had Montgomery out there, but Kyle, we we compromised, and Simmons at left tackle, Montgomery's at right tackle. I ha- so so the backup right tackle though. Yeah, because that screwed mine up. Because I had I had um, I had Montgomery as my backup right tackle. So I gotta gotta look to see who else who else is out there that we can. That we can I do Kyle, forward. I I had my backup right tackle as Tegra Chibola. Um, I actually have him as a starter. I do too. <laughs> What? Okay, so starting right guard, I have Tegra, Chabola at right guard. Uh, yep. But I, in my mind, in case of an injury, they bump him out the tackle. You feel me? I got you. I got you. And then, and then, uh, Tegra's uh, backup is Vamahi. I I also have that. Yes. Okay. You don't right. see anything. Well, I don't know why you don't see anything. I'm sharing my screen. You should have a chart on your screen. Um, sorry. And then the and then the left guard, left guard. I got um I got Simmons. Oh, not, I'm sorry, not Simmons. I'm sorry, Jackson. Uh, yeah, got Jackson out there. Uh, yeah, and I have Saraveld backing him up. Um, for me, I have a. Uh, Padilla, Padilla, Padilla. I Man, you, put you too threw many me. I was there. I put yeah, too many Padilla. there. <laughs> Padilla, Padilla. Yes. I assume Padilla. I, I actually am not a. That's that's how Anthony Padilla of Smosh fame 
pronounces it. Um, I could see Hinsman moving to guard. Uh, is is what Gangland says? Possibly. Um, possibly. possibly. Um, I I mostly see. Oh, could you see? Yes, could theoretically. I, I, th- I think I think you got some good. I mean, Jackson and Tegra. Those are solid. Those are in my mind. I think those are those are solid, solid, solid guards. I feel very comfortable in the interior right there. Jack Jackson, McLaughlin, and uh, and Tegra. Yeah, um, I I do too. Hinsman has if, if, reps IDing Mon- pass pro with McLaughlin. That could be beneficial. We were talking about it before you got in here. I'm not really sure where the relationship is right now between Ohio State and and Hensman. That's 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 sort of where I'm at right now. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess we'll finish off the uh, the line here. We'll go we'll go to tight end. We'll go with the tight end since we lost um, um, with Stover out. Yeah. I, think I have Katz Merrick. I think. Yeah, I think I think that's the obvious choice. That's the obvious choice to have him right there. Yeah, the Ohio transfer. Um, I, I think that they went and got someone who's a, a blocker, and I think they went and got someone who's a blocker for a reason. Um, the yep. huge six six physical guy. Um, a blocker who can make a tough catch. Yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty. I mean, like you bring in Howard. Uh, spoiler alert, I, I do think Howard ends up being the quarterback. Um, I think you bring him in to, you know, run a read option and to have a tight end who can block. And I, I think, I think that's why you bring in Katz Merrick. Um, I do think you see a decent amount of Julian Thurman mix in who I have as my backup tight end. Um, but I, I don't think Thurman is, I would assume you know, Thur- Thurman came in a bit undersized, you know, mm-hmm. after winter workouts, after spring workouts, after summer workouts, you know, may- maybe he, he he's puts on some muscle and maybe he's a little bit more ready to go out there and block. Um, but, you know, I think that's probably the key for him getting on the field, you know, because you still have G Scott there. Um, and that's actually who I have as my backup is G Scott. Yeah. Um, with, with Thurman there, with, and I I don't know. So you don't you don't think Scott you you don't think you you we're going to see Scott out there. I kind of think Scott might be a f- fullback. We saw him playing a lot in the backfield towards the end of last year. I don't have fullback as far as on the depth chart per se. But kind of an H back, kind of a fullback. I think that's where we saw him playing a lot. Um da- down the stretch for Ohio State. That might be his role on this team. But as far as like an on the line tight end, I don't know. I think a lot a lot of it depends upon how much weight and how comfortable the coaching staff is with Thurman as far as his blocking ability as to, you know, how many reps are split between Thurman and Scott. Do you want to, I, I, I guess I'll get, I'll let you have Thurman or maybe do Thurman or Scott. You can do <laughs> Thurman or Scott. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Where Moving are we going then next? On. Um, I guess we'll do the quarterback next. I I think I think right now it's it's Howard. Howard's your your starting quarterback. And until Yeah, I'm still not gonna let you do team, it this time. St- still on the team, still Jared. I I still got Brown. I got Brown not, as your backup. I am sorry, but if Howard wins the job. I don't see Brown staying on the team. 
And I we're projecting know, the depth chart. That's what we're doing. We're, I, we're projecting. With, with the team how it is right now, I got I got Brown but as the backup. But now now if he leaves, then he leaves. Okay, then 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 yeah, it's going to be Lincoln as your as your backup. But yeah, no, I don't agree. I I think we're well within our. This is a projection. And if we're projecting all the way to September, I think we have to take what is an obvious departure, a obvious situational departure into account. Um, I, I have to, I, I'm going to leave Keenholz on here. I don't see both Howard and Brown on the team with Howard starting in September. I just do not see that as a possibility. Do you think Brown or Keenholz I agree. I agree. have a future I in the program? Um, well, I, I mean, agree. that just depends I... upon how spring goes. We, we're all kind of giving Howard the job at this point, and I get it. But Brown, what if, what if Brown has an amazing spring and wins the job? But that's, that's just not how I'm projecting it currently, but it's possible. Uh, we heard the amazing spring that's, last year, but he got hurt. What I was sto- hearing. That's the story of Brown, unfortunately, in this career at Ohio State. Is- what I was hearing a lot about Brown was that he was at times spectacular, but inconsistent. I think that's how McCord ended up winning the job was superior consistency. Um, I don't think it's all injuries, although the injuries have certainly not helped him. I'm fine putting Lincoln in there if you put or Brown. <sighs> fine. All right, and the running back, it's it's Trey. It's Trey's the is your starter here. Trey's your starter, and then Judkins, um, the transfer coming in is your backup. I think that while I I don't want to overuse the or. I think this is going to be such a 50 50 split. I I think this is the appropriate time to use the, or I I think think so Henderson or I think they're going to split carries pretty 50 50. I think this is the, this is the exact opportunity to use the, or, and I I have Henderson or Judkins. It real realistically should be Henderson and Judkins. They're both RB one and that's okay. So you really, you really are saying here, Jared, that Judkins is on par with with Henderson. Yes. Hmm. Yes, yes, I do. I. There are many people who would tell you that Judkins is, excuse me, is Judkins is better. I'm not signing off on that per se, but. Dallin will see significant reps if we're going to have 16 game season. You can't put all those reps on two guys, uh, is is what Gangland says. That that's assuming Dallin stays around to receive those reps. Um, which is a pretty big as- assumption, I think, at this point. But yeah, Kyle, I, I think I think this is your, a, who do you have as your 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 backup then? Peoples, he's a true freshman. Um, I want Dallin to stay around. I hope Dallin stays around. I think if he ends, I think if he leaves spring camp as the third running back, I don't know that he does. I hope he does. I want him around. I, I, I think the gangland is absolutely correct. Dallin will see significant reps. If we're going to have a 16 game season, gangland is absolutely right. Will Dallin Hayden agree? Is, is the question. Will he stick around to see those reps? And I don't think he will, which is why I have James Peoples, the true freshman, as the third running back. Um, but I but again, I want I want I want Dallin Hayden to stay. That's not me saying otherwise. I hope he stays, but I don't know that he will. 
Dallin has made I'll, it sound like he's staying for a I'll, while. Maybe. I'll, okay. Okay. Then I'll, I'll, I'll keep what you have here then, Jared. Um, the X wide receiver. So we're going to go with our three wide receivers. Let's start with the X, the obvious one. It's, it's a Buka. Buka is your, is your starter for, for X. And I'll just, for me, b- before, before we move on, I don't know how obvious a book is going to start. I don't know how obvious it is that he's going to be X. I I could see him playing any, he could start at any three of the wide receiver spots and I wouldn't be shocked. I'm just tossing okay, that out there. It's He's right, absolutely let's, starting. Let's, I, I'm not going to say absolutely where. All right, let's do this then, Jared. So let's, let's do our three starters then. Let's do that. Well, I have okay, five. Let's do that first. So, so, so wide receiver two, number two, I have um, Ballard. I have Ballard or Tate. And then the slot, the slot I have Tate. I have Ennis or Smith in the slot. I I think we have a, I think we have a five wide receiver rotation, which isn't entirely true because I think Abuka is going to be on the field all the time. But I think the other two wide receiver spots will have will rotate too deep. Um, that that's how I see it. I I think there are five wide receivers on this team, in my opinion, who are going to see the majority of the reps if they stay healthy. And those five people are Abuka, Tate, Ballard, Ennis, and J.J. Smith. Yeah, I have where they end so up I, on the field and in what can mixture of reps. I'm not 100 percent sure, mm-hmm. but I will say it's those five guys. I will say that Abuka is always on the field and Ballard, Tate, Innocent yeah, so, Smith will be rotating. Yeah, so Abuka, Ballard, Tate or my three. And then the, the backups I had was Innis, uh And then for backup for Ballard was going to be. Uh, it was going to be Antwi or Antwi, excuse me, or Grays. And then the slot I have, it's Grays or, or Smith. I have um, the backing up Abuka at X. I have uh, Antwi at Z. I have Grays uh, behind Ballard or Tate. And at the slot, I have Rogers behind Ennis slash Smith. Um, how, how are we go, how are we going to do this one then, Jared? <laughs> I don't know. You, they're, they're the same. They're the same players. It's just, yeah. I just, I just have maybe more of a uh, healthy rotation than you do, a, or maybe a more structured rotation than you do. If that makes sense, because because you got you got Buka you got a Buka in, and I think I think Ennis is. Uh, I think Ennis fits well between Buka, and I, th- I just think Ballard and Tate are your are your other starters, and then you get then you got the other the other four um, young wide receivers to back them up. Yeah, I just I feel pretty good about the five wide receiver rotation at the top. Okay. Um. And again, I don't necessarily care a whole lot about, you know, is Abuka an X or is he a Z or will he be in the slot if there's three wide receivers on the field? Um, because I, I quite frankly think that that's not going to be super set in stone regardless, especially for Abuka, who, pro- you know, is a veteran in this system. You know, he could play all three positions. I, I feel like he could do that reliably, you know. Okay. For a younger guy like J.J. Smith, maybe J.J. Smith just learns one of the positions at the top. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I don't know. Kyle, you, you you see what I have on the board right now. Do you want to advocate for any changes? No, it's... I, I don't think we're going to... I don't think we're going to come to an agreement here, so we'll just, we'll just keep it. Um... So before we go on the defense here, I think I think we'll take a quick 
quick ad break here. Yeah, uh, if you want to avoid these ads, you can sign up for our Patreon, uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Um, you can avoid these little ad breaks in the audio version of the podcast uh, by visiting our Patreon and getting our uh, ad-free exclusive podcast feed at patreon.thesloopcast.com. It's only uh, $3 a month or $32 a year. Okay, Kyle. It's time for the defense. All right. Where would you want to start? Uh, how about you, the nose may, tackle? You may want to. You may want to zoom out a little oh. bit. Okay, I got it. I there got you it. Go. There we go. There we are. Um, yeah. I, 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 I would, I, I would appreciate Kyle if we just went down the 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 show notes. <laughs> That's how I have the players ordered. All right, fine. <laughs> All right, nose tackle. I think the I think the line. I think the defensive line. <laughs> we, we agree. We agree. Uh, your loose tackle is Hamilton. Yeah. Your your other defensive tackle is um is Williams. I have those backwards on the graphic for some reason. If you're looking at the graphic, just know that those are backwards and that I'm not going to fix it. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to fix um, it. I just then, know that they're backwards. Your, your strong, your strong side is, um, is Tui Malau. And then your, your weak side is Sawyer. Yeah, I agree. Um, we can talk about the Jack position. I, I didn't have a way necessarily to put that up on the screen as a, like a 12th player of sorts. Uh, we can certainly talk about that, uh, but maybe we finish out the defensive line first. Uh, but as far as the starting core goes, yeah, Kyle and I are in total agreement. Those are your starting four defensive linemen. Um, my call leaves Hamilton, who started a bunch of games last year, even when Hall was on the team and rotated pretty evenly with Hall, is is just yep. your starter now. Um He's just your 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 straight and away starter now. Uh, I'm not even that concerned about the depth because uh, I think uh, behind Hamilton you have Malone uh, or McDonald, and I think behind Williams you have Canoe, and you also have um, Smith Jr. And again, if yeah, you're looking I, at the graphic, know that I have the defensive tackle and the nose tackle backwards. Yeah, I have Malone as your backup and Kanye as your, as the backup. Yeah, I just I just decided to put a six man rotation on the screen. Um, and then that's, you're, you're, that's all. I think the backups. I think the backups for the defensive end. I, I think it's it's Curry and Jackson. Are you, yeah, are your backups Curry behind JT Jackson behind Sawyer? Um, that's I, I again. I think that's pretty well established at this point. Yep, very. I'd solid. say my very my solid. my only my only take would be that the um, I think they'll rotate a little bit more aggressively this year. I think the uh, past couple years, um, JT and Sawyer took the majority of the carries, and I think that this year you might see Curry and Jackson rotate in more. All right, fair enough. Um, all right, you, you were mentioning the Jack position. I know you don't have that up here. Right. Not on the so screen. The Jack or Jack or even the third linebacker, if you want to. If you want to put it that way, the uh, third linebacker or the fourth defensive end, but he's standing up. Um, it, however, you choose to. I think because because of the entry of downs, I think you're going to. I think that's that fits Styles. That fits Styles in that Jack position. Yeah, uh, I think you see Jack. Uh, yeah, I do think you'll see Styles uh, play the Jack role. Um, I think Cam Williams it feels like the obvious backup there. Um, 
assuming he is able to stay healthy this year, um, which is obviously and unfortunately been a challenge for him. Mm-hmm. Um, what I think, what when I look at this defense, I see th- ten guys who are the the first string. I I think that Tyler Williams, J T Sawyer, Styles, Simon. Hancock, Burke, Igbenosa, Ransom Downs. Like, those are your, that's like your core 10 guys. And then you can make adjustments around that. Because maybe Styles is playing the Will linebacker position, or maybe he's closer to the line and he's playing the Jack. And when you have him closer to being a linebacker, you bring in an extra defensive lineman, which is your nose tackle. And if you have him playing... Um, uh, more up and sort of playing as a defensive lineman, then you might have an extra linebacker on the field and then that would be Hicks. Um, so I think depending upon the situation, um, you're essentially kind of floating between a four, three, uh, but it's, it's not even a fourth. Uh, no, let me take that back. You're kind of floating somewhere in between a four, two and a three, three. And like that extra guy is 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 Styles, whether he is the linebacker in the four two, or if he's like in the three three, uh, a mm-hmm. linebacker there, but he's kind of playing up closer to the line as a fourth blitzer, but he's standing. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? If you think about if you're in a four two, are you in a traditional four two with four down linemen and two linebackers, or do you have three down linemen and then you essentially have Hicks in excuse me not Hicks you have uh, Styles as kind of just the fourth blitzer who might be coming from anywhere as the quote unquote fourth lineman in that Jack role. Um, mm-hmm. So again, like you have three down linemen. And in that case, maybe you take Hamilton off the field. You you move Styles up closer to the line. And then you bring Hicks in to replace Styles at linebacker. And that's like your 3-3. Three, three. Am I making sense? Am I expressing my I thoughts it. well? I got it. I understood it. Okay. In the Can't read the font. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry if the font is difficult to read. I was going for a chalk motif. I, I probably could I have, have put a clearer the, which, font which, on there. I don't think we're going to really see him as a, as a backup here, but I think the backup for the Jack is um, is uh, Williams. Yeah, yeah. Cam Williams, for sure. I would say Cam, so. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, linebackers. I get. I guess we will do the uh, the two linebackers here, and I. It's, it's Simon and Hicks. It's Simon and Hicks here. Sometimes Hicks, sometimes Styles. Again, because of the long thing I just said. I I think St- Styles doesn't leave the field. If he's the Jack, he's the Jack, and if he's not the Jack then he's the will linebacker. If he's playing Jack, then you bring in Hicks to be the will the the will linebacker. But if he's not playing the Jack, then he's playing the will linebacker in which case Hicks isn't on the field. I think it just sort of depends upon like I said, are you in a 4-2 or are you in a 3-3? Three, three? Outside of the outside of the defensive line, but there's five players that should like never leave the field. And that's that Styles, um, Burke, Igbenosan, Ransom, and Downs. I like don't think you can. I don't think you ever leave the field. I don't think you ever take Hancock off the field. I think you were in a constant nickel. You think so? I do. Even even if it's a, even if it's a power, yeah, a power run. 
offense that they're going up against? I do. Well, because look at it this way. When if you have someone with Styles body type out there, you could easily go into you have your four down linemen. Well, maybe JT bumps in a gap. Well, guess what? Now you have five down linemen. So now you have five down linemen. You have Cody Simon behind the line. And at that point, I feel incredibly comfortable with then you bring Ransom down into the box and he's essentially playing linebacker. This is what you, this is with, with downs joining this team. We now have free reign to play. You now have free reign to play styles in the box where he should have always been. In my opinion. I agree. Yeah. Style should, should be in the box. Like, like between, between, between lane of scrimmage and, the first down mark that's that's where he should be he should never be more than a few yards past the line of scrimmage again like this and it's the versatility that he gives you because he can cover tight ends pretty easily he's obviously good in coverage he was playing safety last year but i also think you could put his hand in the dirt and have him rush the edge i'd argue that's where he maybe should be regardless I don't, I, I don't know about I don't know about that. I Kyle I think that's where he would be best. I think that's where he would be best as a pure edge rusher. Not this year. Well, I'm not that's not where Ohio State needs him. That's not mm-hmm. what I'm saying. I'm saying that's where he would be best. Okay. And if you, if you, so like, yeah, you always have the five cause you just bump him from linebacker down to defensive line. And again, you have, you have ransom who is excellent in run support. You have downs who is excellent in run support, led Alabama by 30 tackles over second place, led Alabama in tackles last year. I I think they could cover the run just fine out of the nickel. All right. And to me, it just depends fair, fair upon enough. which nickel are you running, whether it's a 3-3 three, three nickel or a 4-2 nickel. Right. Who do you got? Who do you got as, uh, or I think we did agree. Uh, Williams as the backup, or I'm sorry, uh, Powers is the backup for the, the mic. Yeah. And then Reese, I have for the backup for the weak side. I have Reese or Glover. I think it could be either one of those guys. I think that's going to be a good uh, camp battle to see who wins that spot. All right. All right. CB1. Burke. Burke. CB2. Igman Oson. Yep. And your Nicholas Hicks. Or Hancock, excuse me. Keep saying Hicks. Hancock. Yep. Hancock, Hancock is the nickel. And then might as well fill out, fill out the rest of the starters. Uh, your your down safety is ransom, and then your your other safety is is downs. Yes. Yeah. Your your field safety. Your um, I spelled field wrong on the graphic, and I locked it in, so I can't change it. That's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> but here, here's, here's where we have things a little, uh, a little interesting here. Um, so you have, or I, I have for the, I have for the backup for the nickel. I have, I actually have Stover. I have Stover as, as the backup. And you have, you have, uh, Matthews, Matthews as the backup. I I think Matthews 
I think the important takeaway here is that Matthews is the um is is the, the fourth, fourth corner. Okay. All right, I can, uh, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. That he Matthews is your fourth corner. Uh we can say, "Oh, well he's the backup nickel." Cuz let's just say either Iggy or Burke gets hurt. What is actually going to happen in that situation, in my opinion, is that Hancock's going to move out of the nickel into CB one or two. And that Matthews becomes the new nickel safety, the new cover safety, the nickel corner, the cover, what, what the slot corner, whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't know. I, 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 I like Stover in that, in that nickel position though. Hancock. I, I, th- you mean? No, as as the backup, as the backup Stover. Stover. Am I might get my guys true mixed true up freshman here? Stover? Are you? Yeah, yeah. I've 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 heard of like a lot of great thing, great things with him and at, at for that uh for that for that nickel position. I really like what I've seen. I, 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 uh, I don't know, Kyle. Um, I, wouldn't you rather have one of the corners there? Yeah, I guess we can keep Matthews. We can keep Matthews. Yeah, I mean, and if not Matthews, Calvin Simpson Hunt, uh, the Elder Styles. I think would be better options there personally and actually have the elder styles slash Simpsons hunt backing up Ignosin at, at cornerback too. Um, but the important thing here is that Matthews is your third or excuse me. Hancock is your third corner. Matthews is your fourth corner. I think guys just sort of bump up. If, if someone like if Burke gets hurt, Ignosin becomes your cornerback one. Hancock becomes your cornerback too. Matthews becomes your nickel guy. Um, and then you have uh, Lorenzo Styles and Calvin Simpson Hunt. And I really don't know, like, who's the fifth guy? Like, one of them is going to be the fifth guy. One of them is going to be the sixth guy. Um, although you do have Bryce West, Miles Lockhart, and Aaron Scott coming in this year. But, um, Cal, can you check the the discord channel who, who among those, uh, if you check the 2024 signed class, who among them is coming in, in the spring, it's denoted in that channel. I forget who's coming in. Join the discord, discord discord.thesleepcast.com where we have all of these, uh, pieces of info easily accessible in the discord server. That's discord discord.thesleepcast.com. This is where I'd put a slogan if I had one. I'm looking. I'm not seeing it, Jared. I apologize. The tw- if you go to the 2024 signed class channel, mm-hmm. there's a, a tulip next to all the players who are coming in in the spring. Uh, a tulip. It's a, it's a, it's a flower that uh, typically uh, blooms in the spring. So corners are West, Lockhart, and Scott. All three of them are coming in in the spring. Mm -hmm. There you go. So, you know, maybe one of them ends up entering into that battle as well. And the the backups, I think for the, the other safeties we agreed with is a harder backing up ransom and, and, um, Hartford Hartford backing up downs. I agree. Um, that I feel is the most likely to me. Um, you have Jaden Bonzu, who is you know will be entering his second year, uh, as well as Cedric Hawkins Jr. entering his second year. Maybe one of those two guys makes a run for one of those jobs. Uh, I think that's certainly possible. Uh, but for right now, it feels like you know Carter and Hartford based off of their playing time last year, uh, at least have a, an advantage in that race for now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All 
All right, Kyle. All right. I don't, I don't, I didn't make a graphic for the special teams, but we do have special teams in the notes. Uh, but before we do that, just want to take another quick commercial break. Um, we're going to jump, uh, to a Spreaker commercial on the podcast feed. Um, if you don't want to hear the Spreaker commercials on the podcast feed, you can, uh, join the Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com where you can get an ad free listening experience. It's, uh, you can get a bunch of other cool benefits, premium access to the discord server, early access to episodes, uh, all that and more, uh, over at patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, again, $3 a month, $32 a year. I got real quick special teams, um, kicker. I, let me, let me look at the spreadsheet real quick. We, we have, we have, we have no, we have a minor disagreement at kick returner. We do. Yes. A minor disagreement at kick returner. Uh, we both have fielding as the kicker. We both have our, our new Aussie punter McGuire as the punter, um, mm. uh, yep. Furlman as the long snapper. We both have punt returner Caleb Downs. Kyle, how excited are you for Caleb Downs uh, to be returning kicks or punts at least? My hopes have skyrocketed. Don't let them down. <laughs> Don't let them downs. Um, yes. Kick returner. We both have downs. And I put Ballard. You put a Buka. Do you want to fight about it? Nope. It's a yeah, Buka. me either. I fine. You, you, you can have it. Um, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't feel strongly one way or the other. All right, Kyle. Um, that's it. That's, that's our way too early podcast prediction, um, or podcast prediction, depth chart position podcast. Uh, we'll do another one of these after the spring. So we'll, We'll look, we'll compare to see what had changed. Maybe there'll, there'll be some players who leave after the spring. Um, there might be a player or two who come in after the spring and there unfortunately will probably be an injury or two and there will be battles that are won and lost in that time. So like I said, we'll, we'll revisit this after this, after spring camp, which is, you know, several months away but you know we wanted to get this too early podcast prediction in um reminder to any of the people uh especially in the discord server who are listening at this point we are planning in the coming weeks of doing two ask sloopcast episodes um now these are different than a normal ask sloopcast this is actually us asking the audience for feedback and uh, I want to go ahead and open this up to the general public as well. You can email us, uh, sloopcast at gmail.com, sloopcast at gmail.com. Um, we have two upcoming show ideas. Um, one is called Wild Predictions for the 2024 Season. Um, send us an email with wild as the subject line if you want to... Uh, potentially get your wild predictions read on the show. Uh, I wrote here, this could be Ohio state centric or national stat predictions are fun and wanted, but don't worry about limiting yourself to concrete facts. We won't be keeping score, had fun with it. Tell a story. Um, and we are doing a separate ask Sloopcast episode. Um, if you want to send your idea in on this one, send us an email sloopcast at gmail.com with the subject line fix F I X. Um, this is, if you have an idea to fix college football, you think that there is something wrong with college football and you have an idea to fix it. Um, I wrote here time to write that manifesto. Uh, this can be as serious or as fun as you want it to be. Uh, and then I provide a good example provided by uh, Discord user Spikes, uh, which is probably too small to read there, but I don't really want you to read it anyway because it'll be on the show in the next few weeks. So just opening that up to everybody. Um, again, if you have an idea to fix something with college football, send us an email with fix in the subject line. Uh, what's broken in college football and your plan to fix it? 
And also we're taking wild predictions, wild in the subject line, uh, wild predictions for the 2024 season. It can be Buckeye centric. It can be national college football. Um, and you don't, don't feel like you got to stick to concrete facts. Have fun with it. Tell us a story. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Oh, there's actually quite a few things. I'll try to rapid fire that. Um, big boom. Got a big boom here. Uh, Carter Lowe. Yep. Over, over in uh, Toledo has committed to Ohio state. One of, one of the top offensive tackles. Yeah. For the 2025 class here. Uh, huge, huge. I mean, it's, it's an expected get for Ohio state, but an important get for Ohio state. Very, very. And if you listen to our uh, 2025 mock, uh, he was included in that 2025 mock. And so that is now already, Jared, there are five, one, two, three, four, five, five players in the top 80 in the 24 seven composite that are committed to Ohio state four in the top 80 already. Yeah. Um, taking a quick peek at our mock here. Uh, Ohio state has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven committed already. They do. Yep. Uh, just a quick reference. Uh, that's Devin Sanchez. Um, one of the top corners out of Texas. So here, Mathis, uh, edge rusher out in Philly, out in Philadelphia, Travis St. Clair and Bell Fountain, uh, Blake would be uh, over at St. Francis Academy in Maryland. Uh, one of the uh, top corners just mentioned Carter Lowe, Jane Boggs uh, out in Florida, uh, a wide receiver, not highly, not highly rated, but just keep Yet. an eye on him. And uh, Ejai Lee uh, out in Archbishop Hoban, that is over in Akron, um, an in-state linebacker. Yeah, it's, it's it's a good crew already um, that I think is, is going to get better. Um, I'm very optimistic about our 2025 recruiting class. Yes. Um, and the, and other news here, cause it, it does affect Ohio state is, uh, Jamie Harbs heading on over to Cal heading, had taken, heading over to California, Los Angeles, the NFL, the chargers. Yes. That, that's, that's the state when you, when, Los Angeles. <laughs> when you say Cal on a <laughs> yeah, college football right. podcast. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And I didn't see if this was official Jared, but. That defensive corner is coming with them, right? Coordinator, yes. I think, I think I did see that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I I don't know if that's like officially official, but it has been like reported on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sam Webb. That- Sam Webb at twenty four seven Sports reported that uh, Minter is going to is going to Los mm-hmm. Angeles as well. So I don't know if that's and- like officially official, but it's been reported pretty widely at this point. Yeah, and so Michigan then, two days after Jimmy Harbs um, takes the job over at at char- at the Chargers, uh, they decide to promote more as a head coach, and that's going to be very interesting. I have once a bold NCAA comes out comes out with their rulings. So we have the two Ask Sloopcast questions or uh, Ask Sloopcast episodes in the chamber that we're taking requests for. Also in the chamber we have coming down the pipe um, is a, and God, we've never done this before. We have a know your episode off season edition or just know your episode. God, I can't talk tonight, Kyle, a know your enemy off season edition. We're going to talk about Michigan. We're going to do an entire Michigan episode uh, here in the coming weeks to talk about who Michigan has, who Michigan doesn't have, and what we think of their season upcoming. Actually, I already have the show notes uh, mostly written for that one. All right. All right. That's that's all that's all I want to talk about. I don't want to talk about the basketball team, so we're just going to end. No, let's not talk about the basketball team. Yeah, um, I think I already did enough plugs for tonight. Um, let's see. Uh we're going to do uh Columbus based band. Don't let the name fool you. Their name is defiance Ohio, but they uh, are from Columbus. They will be ending our show tonight. 
So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Defiance, Ohio.